What's up, Wastelanders? How's everybody doing today? I am doing great, and I hope you are too. It's me, Kiki B, and welcome to a brand new episode of Kiki B Plays Fallout 76. I have had a crazy busy couple of weeks, and it's taken me longer to get this video out than I had planned or would have liked, but we're here. Am I a little hyper right now because I just downed a can of Monster? Maybe. Anyway, Atomic Shop updates these past few weeks have been shockingly good, and last week's scaffold kit was no exception. Obviously, I've been playing around with it plenty since then, and I've got a few tricks up my sleeve for those of you who are wondering what to do with it or are maybe on the fence about buying it in the first place. And for the folks who have been waiting patiently for a while now, I'm also finally going to be showing you my amazing modular armchair blueprint because it wasn't really enough for a whole video on its own, and I couldn't come up with any place else to stick it, and I just wanted to get it out there for you wonderful humans to enjoy. Before we dive into that though, if you love what I do here and you're interested in supporting this channel, why not join our Patreon family? Head on over to patreon.com slash or click on that link down in the description to find out more. And of course, join us over on Discord and on Instagram at KikiBeePlays. We would love to see you there. Finally, a quick reminder that I'm also streaming on Twitch these days. Head to twitch.tv slash thekikibee and give me a follow so you don't miss a minute of the action. I'll be streaming at 4 p.m. Eastern time on Fridays and Saturdays. All right, this first trick is a super simple one. We're just gonna use the scaffold kit ramp as a ramp between two split level foundations. It's a nice alternative to stairs or those big chonky wooden or concrete ramps, and it can be placed anywhere along your foundation without worrying about snapping points. So get those lower foundations out of the way and put the ramp where you want it, then grab your trusty flamer trap, burn the thing and put the other foundations back. That's it. Now we're going to address one of the minor issues I have with these, which is that they're just too wide for some uses. But I wouldn't be me if I didn't figure out how to fix that, so place some scaffolding down so that it's centered over the edge of your foundation like this. Now I'm going to remove these end pieces because I just used them to make placement easier, and these two straight pieces and one corner piece are what I'm left with. Guess what we're going to do with them? Yep, burn them. So, do that already. Once they're burned, the game doesn't really know that they exist anymore, which is fine with me. Uh, so go ahead and put some walls in the middle now, which is going to split the scaffolding into a narrow walkway on each side of the walls, which looks really freaking cool. I was a dumbass and didn't put my outer ramp down before I started putting in walls, so then I had to take out a bunch of stuff after and it was annoying, so I recommend if you're putting a ramp outside, do it before your walls. Turn off snapping so that you can place it on the side and you're good to go. Once that's in place, you know, burn it. Now put your walls in because you were smart and you listened to me. Put a ramp on the other side if slash where you want it. Finish it all up and when you're all done, it's going to look like this. My idea for this structure was a boarded up abandoned factory and warehouse where the scaffolding is the entrance and I love the way it turned out. Structures like this, by the way, are why I love the blacked out windows on this build set so much. It just adds to both the grungy abandoned look and the sort of mystery of wondering what's inside. So when you come in, you've got a ramp down, but off to the side, you've got this lovely walkway, maybe the kind of place where a manager or foreman used to hang out to supervise the place. And also here is a pro tip for your chalk lettering set, folks. I fucking love those letters. For our last scaffolding trick, we're going to be stacking it. So I put down some floors where I want the upper level to be, and all you have to do is, you know, place the stuff down. Line it up well, and by the way, if you're interested in floating the scaffolding for whatever reason, this is basically how. Just place it on top of upper floors or foundations, and then just remove the floors and you've got floating scaffolding. In this case, for the placement of the ramps, you want to make sure to turn off snapping and place them well to one side so that you can still walk around them on the lower level because the scaffolding is a bit narrower than a full floor piece so you need the space. You actually want the ramp to stick out past the railing on the side by a tiny bit. Once again we need our trusty flamer trap so go ahead and burn it all down. Now you can remove the floors and after that it's just a simple matter of placing the lower level down. So do a good job lining it up, and this is what it's going to look like after you've finished and repaired everything. I had the idea here to turn this into a sort of defensive compound, and I really like the way it turned out. On the left, I connected the scaffolding right into the upper floor of the building, and the multi-level walkways give you plenty of places to snipe at unsuspecting wildlife or ghoulies or former vault dwellers or whatever floats your little boat. 
Underneath the scaffolding, there's plenty of room in this little sort of courtyard to place down workbenches or whatever it is that you might want, though you may need to use single item blueprints for some of those things to get them underneath the scaffolding because collision boxes in this game are weird. And now for something completely different. I know some folks have been waiting for my famous modular armchair blueprint, and I kind of forgot about it when we couldn't even sit on these things for an entire season. But now we can again, so enjoy. Place down a modular sofa left end and line it up in a spot on the floor where you're easily able to remember exactly where the feet were, if that makes sense. Now snap on a middle and a right end piece, and then you're going to go ahead and remove the two leftmost pieces. Bear with me, this will make sense in a moment. Remember exactly where those feet were? Well, now you're going to put a right end piece down and line its little feeties up in the exact same spot. This is what you're going to blueprint, two right end pieces with a very precisely measured space in between. Now to make your chair. Place the blueprint down with the left side wherever you want your chair to be. Now grab your trusty flamer trap again and burn the left side and probably the wall along with it because why not? And now the magic happens. Snap a middle and then a left end onto this remaining piece and then remove the middle and right end pieces. You're left with two perfectly overlapping pieces. Just repair the broken one and you've got yourself a beautiful wood paneled mid-century armchair in up to three different colors. You're very welcome. So that's it from me today, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Don't forget to make sure that you're subscribed and you've turned on channel notifications so you don't miss out on the next absolutely amazing video. And go give me a follow on Twitch so you never miss a stream. If you liked this and you're interested in supporting the channel, check out that Patreon link. And of course, join us over on Discord and on Instagram. And with that, folks, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you in the next video.